Well guys, it was always going to happen at some point. AI cameras are here and they are actually unhinged. Like surely at some point we cannot consider these actual photos, right? Don't call me Shirley by the way. There's a lot to dig into here so let's waste no time. Hey guys, I'm Ryan Thomas and not every photo that this phone takes is AI generated. I will get to that later. But we have to kick things off by talking about the shots. This is the Magic 7 Pro from Honor. And essentially, once you go past 30 times zoom with this phone's already incredibly capable telephoto camera that we'll discuss more later, you have the option to enable Honor's AI Super Zoom, which takes cues from the relatively mushy or blurry products at this point, and then in the cloud does its best job to replicate what it thought was actually there, but with far more sharpness. Usually this also involves removing all texture and character from images and just spits out stuff with sharper outlines or subjects with texture that was never actually there. The system is trying to detect what you were taking a photo of and then using its training data of that particular subject that it thinks was there, uh, then replacing details as it sees fit. Sometimes these shots can come out all right if all you need is very basic interpretation of the actual thing. Maybe you're trying to make something out in a distance and not sure what it is, but it stokes the proverbial fire about what is and what isn't a photograph. There's certainly AI trickery coming into play before 30 times, by the way. In some shots at 15 times and beyond, you can clearly see some of these characteristics, namely unrealistically sharp outlines with minimal detail or texture, when in reality, there might be a very subtle amount of texture that the camera just isn't picking up. And this just gets exacerbated the further you pinch in, right the way out to where this phone tops out, which is 100 times, pretty insane. In some cases, this can actually be really useful. If you're trying to work out what something is in the distance, you don't need a good photo of it, you just need to work out what it is, then this is pretty good for that. Having something this thin in your pocket that can super zoom in is very handy, as long as the AI actually does know what it's looking at and spits out an accurate representation. Now, I mentioned that the telephoto camera hardware is already very impressive on its own, and that is one part of a very, very powerful camera system here. I would go out and buy the Pixel Pro or the Galaxy Ultra in a heartbeat if it had this kind of camera hardware. The telephoto camera is a 3x or a 70mm-ish 200 megapixel setup with a massive 1 over 1.4 inch sensor. The main is a pretty huge 50 megapixel 1 over 1.3 inch sensor and the ultra wide is a 50 megapixel 1 over 2.88 inch sensor so really not that big on the ultra wide and the selfie camera almost has as big a sensor as the ultra wide it's a 50 megapixel 1 over 2.93 inch. That big camera circle on the back isn't just for looks, though I'm sure many people will be turned off by it and not fall in love with its design. The large camera housing does make way for some serious hardware beneath it. This all translates to a camera that, outside of AI super zoom situations, is phenomenal. Honor already does a fair amount of processing itself, so the images can come out looking almost the opposite to what I like about OnePlus and Oppo's processing. There's a lot of vibrance, a lot of contrast, a lot of artificial sharpness. These images, especially in sunlight or hard light with lots of color in the scene, can really pop off your screen, which might or might not be to your taste. The camera app seems to be missing the sweet option to adjust the focal length Instead, it just gives you the regular magnification levels, but all the cameras on offer here do a serious job. That main 50 megapixel camera is no joke, despite me taking this long to talk about it. It has a variable aperture that lets you switch between f1.4 and f2 in the pro mode, the former allowing you to get more light into the sensor and the latter for capturing more in focus. And whichever mode you use, this camera can capture razor thin depth of field, which gives you a nice smooth blurry background without the need for a portrait mode that can sometimes be a bit hit or miss. At f1.4 on a 1 over 1.3 inch sensor, it really exaggerates this, so photos you capture end up looking almost like what you would take on a bigger camera. There's heaps of dynamic range and detail throughout the shots with this main camera in particular, and it's particularly impressive in the dark where all of that light capturing tech can flex its muscles. The video also looks good out of the Magic 7 Pro. It's limited to Ultra HD 4K 60 or Full HD 240, so it doesn't do the 8K or 4K 120 that many recent flagship smartphones have been able to do, but the stabilization is good, the colors and contrast are pretty natural, 
And again, you can make use of the large sensors to capture really nice scenes. This actually goes for both the main and the telephoto lens where you can get a nice blurry background very naturally. This might not be definitively the best smartphone camera you can buy right now, but it certainly isn't holding back and might be up there with some of the best, even if it doesn't take the crown. The Magic 7 Pro is actually a really solid phone in general. It's a flagship level device with an ultra fast Snapdragon 8 Elite, which makes it supreme for gaming, multitasking, taking AI photos if you really want to. Are they really photos? I don't know. It's one of the fastest phones out right now. And I think it should be because it's £1,100 and it's not available in the US, which is a bit of a shame. Right now in the UK, if you buy this thing, it will come with a 100 watt charger as like an add-on. doesn't come in the box anymore, but at least you'd be getting that as part of the deal, which is pretty cool. I think this is also one of the nicest feeling phones in the hand. Uh, typical on a Magic fashion, it's quite slippery, but it is quite weighty and dense at the same time. Not due to a huge battery, because whilst China gets the silicon carbon one, this one is lithium ion standard, and so this is almost 600 milliamp hours smaller than the equivalent version that you would buy in China. Uh, it's not quite as longevous as well, which makes sense, but easily an all day battery for me. The 120Hz LTPO OLED is phenomenal. The 100 watt wired and 80 watt wireless charging is ace. I am a big fan of that ultrasonic fingerprint scanner, the fully featured face unlock, the 256 gig base storage, and all those cameras in regular non-AI mode. It's still pretty pricey for a phone with software that just feels very cheap. There's a lot of like duplicate apps and stuff. And even though this is the UK model, a non-app draw based default is really annoying. It just looks cluttered and horrible. You can change it, but it just still feels cheap. And Honor is promising five major upgrades this year, which takes it to Android 20. That's pretty cool. It's a bit of a step up from previous years. Not a bad phone this, not at all, but maybe not the best you can buy. As someone who loves photography and videography, who grew up with cameras instead of smartphones to capture my view of the world, this AI camera situation sort of makes my stomach turn a bit. I'm always going to be in favour of something that captures exactly what was there or that does do limited processing, but it isn't up to me. This is something that needs to be seriously considered by not only enthusiasts, but consumers in general, because everyone takes photos on their phones. It's not just limited to photographers and it's going to impact more than just the keen shutter bugs. Soon enough, we really going to be taking photos or just capturing something and having AI generate what it thought was there or what it wants us to see. Now, thankfully, this is an option right now, but how long before it isn't optional anymore? This one requires your feedback, so please let me know in the comments what you think of this whole AI photo debacle. Is it a photo? Is it? I don't know. Uh, I don't think these can really be considered photos anymore, and not everyone, of course. You can take photos with your Honor Magic 7, but the ones that are sort of AI super zoomed, that's a little bit tricky for me to answer. Uh, call me old fashioned, but I like to just take a normal photo, and if it's a bit blurry or if it's a bit soft, so be it. I mean, why am I expecting this to shoot 300 millimeter long shots? It's just not going to happen. Whilst you're down there debating this in the comments, be sure to hit like if you enjoyed today's content. And of course, subscribe to never miss another upload. Thank you so much for watching this one. I've been Ryan Thomas. And I will catch you later. Cheers.